Hello everyone, welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, we're going to take a look at Topaz Adjust AI. Now I'm, a, I'm on the uh, Topaz website and you can see right here where it says Topaz Adjust AI, give your uh, photos more soul, emotion, energy, life, and power. Uh, how do you define it? Uh, with one click, Adjust AI leverages the power of artificial intelligence to transform your photos into something incredible. Our AI-powered modes bring out colors, shadows, details, and more to make your photos as vivid as intended all in one step. So we're going to take a look at it. I'm going to run some tests on it, and uh, we'll see its strength, strengths and weaknesses. Uh, by the way, here's their little splash screen here. So here's the before image, and here's the after. So pretty, uh, you know, they're, they're claiming that it does a lot, but let's see if it really does it. Uh, and also... Um, I do endorse uh, Topaz products, and I do have a coupon code that you can save 15% off in their products. It's linked in the description below in case you're interested in any Topaz products. Uh, just thought I'd let you know about that up front. So without any further ado, let's get into Adjust AI and see if it's what they say it is. And this is an unbiased review. You'll see everything for yourself. Let's talk about what we're going to do here today. Now, I have six different images, all right? Now, uh, one thing that's... Uh, one thing that is the same in all the images is I've added, uh, as you can see here, Topaz Denoise AI to all the images. Now this first image is right out of my camera. It was a Canon 5D Mark II. Um, it's underexposed, so I thought this would be a good test for Adjust AI. Um, no adjustments on it whatsoever. It comes out of Lightroom right into Photoshop, but it has no adjustments, no noise reduction. But I added Topaz Denoise AI, and now the second image is that same image with uh, the uh, with an auto adjustment in Lightroom and then brought into uh, Photoshop uh, with no noise uh, reduction, but then I added the noise reduction. The third image is a, another image from Lightroom that was auto adjusted in Lightroom with no noise reduction, but again, denoise AI added to it. The fourth image is just the stock image of a city shot here. We'll see if we can improve that. The fifth image is another stock image. Uh, we'll see if we can prove this image. And the last image is one of my uh, flower images that has already been edited. We'll see, uh, is Adjust AI good after an edit? Can it add some extra pop to an image? But we'll test that all out, so let's get started. Let's go to our first image here. Now remember, this was right out of Lightroom. It's an underexposed image, no adjustments, no noise reduction. Let's go right into... Um, adjust AI, Topaz adjust AI. Okay, and it loads up pretty quick here. Uh, now, up at the top here, auto adjust AI. We're only dealing with this right here for now, this section, off, standard, and HDR, okay? There are adjustments in here, and we may touch on these briefly, but there's brightness, color, clarity, detail, split toning and grain. So there's a lot of extra adjustments you can make in your image. But I'm only inter interested in that magic one button touch like we read on the uh, advertisement, okay? How one click can get us where we need to go, okay? So let's go ahead and click standard. And let's see what it does with an underexposed image. Takes a few seconds here to process. And um, there's the after image. Now if I click on the canvas here, you'll see the before. Left click it and there's the after. It's a little better, but not that great. All right, in my opinion. So I'm going to say with an underexposed image, not a really good idea. So let's go ahead and click apply. All right, now let's go to the second image, which is the same image. Now, the difference between this image and the last image is that this image came from Lightroom as well, but I click the auto button and use the Sensei artificial intelligence to adjust this initially, and it's fantastic. And I highly recommend if you're using... Uh, either ACR, Adobe Camera, RAW, or Lightroom, use that auto adjustment. It's fantastic. It's a good starting point for you. But that's all I've done here was clicked auto, and it came from that image that you saw before, that dark underexposed to this, so it's pretty amazing. Again, I added noise reduction to every image that you see here, so I'm not going to say that anymore. So now let's take this guy. I duplicated the layer, and we're going to take it into... Uh, Topaz Labs, Labs Adjust AI. And let's see what it can do with an image that has been, you know, has some initial adjustments on it. Let's see if it can improve that image. So let's click on Standard. 
And again, it takes a few seconds here to render. I have a pretty fast computer. It's a Mac, and it's, it's, it's a 2019 model. All right, so let's click here on the uh, left click on the canvas. Here's the before and here's the after. Again, the before and the after. Or we could click on the split screen here, and we could do this as well. But for my test, I'm just going to click on the canvas so you can actually see the before and after. So look at the clarity. It almost looks as if, let's see the before one more time. It almost looks like a haze has been removed from it. And it's also helped the white balance, I think. Uh, everything looks clear and defined and sharp and clean. So I'm really happy with that. Let's click on the HDR style and see what that does to it. Not a big fan of HDR, but let's see what it does. Not bad. It looks a little blue up here, and the water down here looks a little green. Uh, the building here is a little blue, but you also have a strength slider, so you could pull back on here and ease that off if you wanted to. But I'll be honest with you, I don't really mess with the HDR at all with this piece of software. I use standard, so I'm going to put it back to standard and take the strength the whole way up. I usually, when I use Adjust AI, I just take it back into Photoshop at full strength because I can always... Uh, change the opacity inside of Photoshop. So let's go ahead and click apply. And this brings us back into Photoshop. And as I was saying, I could take this opacity here and pull it off and pull it back up if I felt it went too strong. But let's click the eyeball here. Here's the before and here's the after. So a really nice result. I'm happy with that. So the first, the first image, which was this same image without any adjustments, didn't do such a good job. Now remember, it was underexposed. If the image wasn't underexposed, it would probably do a decent job with it. But an underexposed image, don't don't use it for that okay it's not going to help you there all right so now we're going to go on to the next image to save time in this video I, i've just launched straight into the uh adjust ai and i'm going to do that for the next four images and then at the end we'll come back to photoshop and we'll see the before and after results of everything okay so here's my next image uh again for my canon 5d with some auto adjustments from lightroom and that's it so let's go ahead and click standard and see what it can do for this one Alrighty, and it, again, it's pretty quick. All right, so let me click left click on the canvas. Here's the before and here's the after again before and after it seems like it works with white balance. It works with with clarities and it works with um, it adds pop it like dehazes in some way, but it it does a great job again. There's the before and there's the after now for me. I think it might be a little uh little less warm than I would like it so but I do have a, a temperature control here so I can take this temperature and move it a little bit to the warm side and see right there I can add a little bit of warmth back in there so but really nice results I'm really happy with that now we're moving on to a stock image this is a uh, probably an image in the blue hour um, pretty cool image let's see what it can do with something like this oh and by the way See right here where it says presets. This also comes equipped with a bunch of presets. We'll do another video where we'll get into these uh, adjustments and presets and things like that. But for now, we're just doing that one-click deal, right? So let's go ahead and click standard, that one-click standard adjustment. Let's left-click the canvas. Here's the before and here's the after. Again, look how that haze has been removed. It has affected the white balance. So I'm really thinking this has something to do with white balance. They don't specifically come out and say that, but I think it really does. I think it does kind of correct your white balance somewhat. Because if you look at these buildings here, when I show you the before, they look a bit on the yellow side, which I like actually. So in this case, I would probably warm this up a little bit. So I'm going to take the temperature and warm this up a little bit like there now let's left click the canvas before and after but now that was already a good looking image and it was already processed but there it is even after an adjustment you know an image that's been processed i should say it can really add some extra uh pizzazz to that image if that's a good word but it definitely cleans it up clears it up uh, it almost looks like standard definition TV, high definition TV. So I really like the results here. Let's click on HDR just to see what it does here. Now, that looks pretty nice. Again, here's the before and here's the after. It's a little on the warmer side, um, but uh, it's not like over the top HDR looking, which is really nice. I'm going to click it back to standard. 
Okay, and I still have my temperature set. On to the next image. All right, here's our next image. It's a stock image. It's a beautiful image. A uh, lot of fog and atmosphere happening here. Let's see what it can do with this. So let's go ahead and click standard and see. Ah, pretty nice results. It's definitely gotten a lot clearer. Let's again, here's left clicking it before and here's the after. Look at the sky. The sky looks more natural. I love the oranges in here. Uh, it's looking pretty pretty nice. Again, here's the before and here's the after. Let's try the HDR style just for the heck of it. See what it can do in the HDR mode. See if it's going to be over the top or nice. Eh, it's a little over the top, but it's, it's actually kind of beautiful. It's a little too strong, so I could take the strength and pull it back. Maybe even like so. Let's click. Here's the before and here's the after. So, yeah, so... That HDR is not bad. I, I, I highly recommend now try it because I like the results in this image. But I'm going to go ahead and click it back on standard and we'll save it out in the standard mode. We're on our last image now, though. This is my image that I've edited. So I wanted to see what kind of results I could get with an image that I've already edited. OK, so let's go ahead and click on standard and see what kind of results we're going to get here. Curious on this one. Hmm, very interesting. Let me left click before and after. Well, it's definitely brought colors up. Look at these spikes here. They kind of glow and come to life here. It's pretty cool. It might be a little too strong for me, so what I might do on this one would be to ease the strength back a little bit. Maybe somewhere right around there. Let's click on the before and the after. The before and the after. Hey, it did a good job. I actually like this better. I'm going to save this one right the way it is here with the strength pulled back a little bit. So let's go ahead and click apply and that'll bring us right back into Photoshop. Let's take a look at all of our results now. Let's go to our first image here. Remember, this is the one that I edited. I did no editing on in uh, Lightroom whatsoever. OK, so it was an underexposed image. It started out looking like this and this is what Adjust AI did for it. So. In my opinion, it's not good for like taking an underexposed image and turning it into something beautiful. Now Lightroom can do that because let's go to the next image right here. Okay, so here's the before. This was that same image that was dark that I ran the auto adjust in Lightroom, which does a really great job. And as I said earlier in this video, use that. If you're using Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom, use the auto feature because it uses their Sensei artificial intelligence and it's beautiful. It's a great starting point, so use that. But look, it's really great. Now let's look at the Adjust AI. After Adjust AI, it looks like this. A nice improvement, really. It's a lot more clear, defined. Uh, again, it looks like uh, standard def TV, high def TV. So a really nice result with that. Of course, this is the initial phase here. I'd have to start doing other adjustments and things like that to really bring this image to life. But this is a good starting point. All right, so I have some other things to say about Adjust AI concerning should you use it at the beginning or at the end, all right? And we'll talk about that briefly later. So let's go on to the next image. So here is the before. This is without uh, adjust AI and this is with adjust AI now remember without is auto adjustments in Lightroom so without and with adjust AI so does a really nice job it's a lot more clear again standard def TV high def TV to me that's a good way of explaining it it's doing a beautiful job here on to the next image this was a stock image here's the before here's the after again beautiful results not crazy over the top results, but nice results. It's a lot more clear. It's a lot more defined. And I think it does a great job. And I would definitely use this in my workflow for sure. Let's go to the next image. Here's the before and here's the after. Again, you know, it looks, uh, looks really nice there, but after it's a lot more defined. Now on this one, I'd probably take the opacity and take it off a little bit to maybe somewhere right around you know, 60. So here's the before and here's the after. But beautiful results here. I'm really enjoying this Adjust AI. I think it's it's a great product, actually. So let's go to our last image. This was an image that I already processed, okay? So this was my original processed image, and this is after Adjust AI. Now, I've already pulled the adjustment back in Adjust AI, but man, look at the difference there. 
And I was happy with this image, but now I really love it. The colors pop, these spikes really glow, and it's really looking beautiful. So my, my take on Adjust AI is like, when should you use it before or after? And I would say both, it really depends. Definitely you can take Adjust AI and run it on past images and it will probably improve them. But it's also a good, uh, it's also a good uh, piece of software to add at the beginning of your uh, processing adjustment, like as in this image right here, as you can see the before and after. It's a good place to you know, start working from too. So you can use it uh, at the beginning of your editing process and you can also use it at the end of the editing process you know, you can try it even on images where you use it at the beginning, but you can also try it at the end just to see if it improves it. Well, there it is. Topaz Adjust AI. You know, this was an unbiased uh, testing of Adjust AI, and I wanted to show it to you to see if it would be something that would really aid you in your workflow. I'm going to start using it a lot more after these tests. I mean, I've had it for a while and I haven't really used it much, but after running these tests, I can see a really... Uh, reason, a real reason for using it actually so I hope you enjoyed it and remember um, also I do have uh, an affiliate link that you can click on in the description below and also use my uh, use my promo code that I've listed there and you'll be able to get 15% off of uh, Topaz products so hey anyway I hope you enjoyed this one if you did please give it a like and share it with your friends if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel please subscribe and click that bell notification icon and this way you'll be uh, notified each time I upload a new video uh, thanks again for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly and I'll see each and every one of you right here next time but until then happy editing